AJ Slider Productions, and welcome to the 25 subscriber special. I am going to show you a few things in World of Tanks that you may or may not know. Right now I'm showing you decals and a lot of visual things, and you can see that my client has been modded. I will give a link to the mod, since this is self-made, in the video description that will link to my Dropbox account. You will be able to download it from there and enjoy the historical immersion mod that I have made for World of Tanks. I have a lot of other mods that I will soon showcase, but this is one of the mods that is most recent. So I'm going to show you one good game and one bad game in the order of bad to good, because I feel that you should sh that I should share both the good parts of me and the bad parts of me within five games that I played th tonight. It's about 7.15 right, right about now, and without further ado, let's get into a battle with the T-127. Okay, we're back on Erlenberg, where we're in a Tier 4 battle against one Panzer B2, and the Panzer B2 is going to be the one that I'm going to be shooting at the most in this battle because I wanted to get the highest profile target, which is the B2, out of the picture, even though I did not have a cannon that could penetrate his frontal armor. So, as I'm waiting down to the battle, I'm looking for a good strategy. Since the T-127 is very slow, I decided to go into the city and support the heavies may be a very bad decision on my part because the T-127 is also a little bit faster than most um, heavily armored light tanks like the Valentine 2 other premium but at tier 4 this tank is pretty good um, the only thing that it's not good at is deflecting shots when being hit in the driver's compartment it's just an extra bolted on plate on the right hand side of the upper glacis and then when you get up to there I initially thought that this when you get up to there it just doesn't work initially thought that I could go through that keyhole but my tanks not big enough so no, not tall enough excuse me and so I just sat there like a lump because no one was advancing I didn't want to be out of support range so then I saw a friendly Panzer B2 in just a second, and also I believe a Lux coming to assist. There's the B2, and over th over behind me, the yeah, that's a Lux, and I just came to support them, and I saw a Matilda on the right as I pan over there, and I got behind cover before he had a chance to shoot at me. So now I see that Panzer 1C, and I'm like, he's not going to pop out again. And yes, he is. He's going to pop out and let me give a free shot on him, but I didn't have a chance to shoot him a second time, or I did but I messed up. Then I shot the Panzer B2 in an aggressive move to try and get rid of him. And it's going real ugly for me because I'm using standard rounds. And this is the first premium round, second premium round that I did. And as I was going through the premium rounds, um, the B2 is being given a what for. And I almost was able to finish him off at the same time that the B2 got finished off by someone else. So even if I had been killed there, uh, it didn't work. So here's another battle in the KV-2 coming up right your way. Okay, we're now on Abbey in the KV-2. It is a Tier 7 match, and our team was pretty good this battle. However, I was in a tank that I could carry in. Uh, because I had a 152mm howitzer, and who doesn't like the Russian 152mm howitzer? Well, I do. And Jingles does. 
So I just decided, heck, why not go all the way up into the Abbey and snipe from there. I have a KV-2 with three skills, and this three skill crew is probably why I was able to carry with six kills and almost land a victory. I mean, I was so close to a victory at this point, single-handedly destroying six enemies. Three of them damaged, mind you, but most of them undamaged. And it was a rewarding experience for me because I didn't know that my fifth battle that night was going to be like this. So I'm heading up the abbey, and I notice that there, there's a, there's not very many people going on the flanks, which could spell trouble for us. And then the T20 decides to block me a little bit, and then I tr avoid him. I do get spotted there, probably by the Nash horn that's in the back, and of course the other light tanks that were up on the abbey hill there and I just bounced a shot from the Nashorn and then I say oh hello <laughs> and kill the Cromwell right in his tracks and that was very rewarding because who gets to who gets to get the last laugh you Cromie or me anyway I saw a possible shot in the M4 A3 E8 but did not have a chance to shoot at him which made it spell trouble for me because while I was distracted by trying to get a shot off at that M4 I got shot in the side by a Nash Horn the same Nash Horn that had bounced me on the gun mantlet so early and the Elite LEFH 18B2 just splashed me but it didn't make contact with any of my modules so I didn't take any damage I barely avoided that shot so now I'm doing something. I'm judging for when the Nashorn shows himself again. I reposition a tiny bit, wait for him to come out, and then when he gets unspotted again without moving, I fire. And that's when I blind shot the Nashorn after he puts a shell into my mantlet and it bounces. So that was the second kill of the match, and I have to say, that was a pretty well-aimed shot for a KV-2. Now I see this AT-15A and I'm like, ooh, free damage, he's AFK. And I back up just in case he's gonna try and shoot me, and I found out that the AT-15A is a very slow tank, um, or he's just not paying attention to who's shooting at him and he just got a fistful of 300 damage. So I'm looking for the AT-15 once again, just camping this position just for a minute, and I eventually spot him again. Yep, there he is. And I put another shot into him, and he reacts by moving away a little bit. But what he doesn't do is he just doesn't get the hell out of there. That's how stupid some people are with their tank destroyers, is when they get spotted and if they get spotted, if they have sixth sense, or if they get hit and don't have sixth sense, move the hell away from that position. Because if you try to shoot from the same position, you're only compromising your own position doing so. So people can guess where you are. Even artillery can guess your tracer fire if you shoot from the same place more than once and get spotted. You can guess it. Even if you move back a little bit, you're still going to get hit by artillery. And so I put I put a second shot into him, totaling another 300 damage. He's down to half health and I and I will eventually spot him again. There he is. And then he sees me. I put a nice shell into his engine deck, a nice perfectly arced shell and he misses twice while bouncing off my gun mantlet the second time. And then I wait for the reload, and then put the final shell into him so he can say sayonara and 
take the tutorial on how to play tank destroyers effectively. So we're losing right now. 9 to 11. Not very good odds. The opponent has dominated the 1 2 3 line, and there are only a few tanks left on the 9 0 line. I head back to do some base defense, knowing that I will be useful in that regard. I get spotted by an AMX ELC BIS that's on the hill over there, and knowing that I'll be targeted for artillery strike, I move back, and sure enough, I get penned by a heat round from the LEFH 18B2. So then I set up myself in an RT safe position behind the big abbey, and so I will not become a target for artillery anytime soon. And they're coaxing me to come out and fight. And I'm like, no, I'm going to spot you first and I'm going to kill you because I have the better view range after my skills and perks, because my skills and perks make things a little bit easier. So I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I spot the T-43, but I do not have a shot on him because he's so low down, and if I try to go over that ridge line, then I'm only going to get in trouble. And that's when I spot the VK-3601H at very perilously low health, and I could have shot him there, but I wanted to wait for later because if I had shot then, then I would likely have not penetrated or would have missed. So they start capping. Both the ELC AMX and the VK are capping. And later in the video I could tell that the ELC AMX was spotting me in order for me to spot that VK. And I spotted that VK and finished him off for good measure. But since the cap circle only went back down to 12%, I knew that the ELC AMX was on the cap circle and still capping. What I did, though, was trying to coax him to give up his position, and I waited a little bit too long because by the time it got to half the percentage, the T-43 had already flanked around. And as you will see soon, I take that T-43 out with with no trouble at all, which would have been different if I had been ignorant and stayed in that position. So I was like, time to relocate, and then I, sure enough, spot that T-43, and boom, while on the move, shot him dead. And that's what you do with a KV-2. It's no problem. As long as you have the 152mm gun, you get to get easy kill very easy kill. The ELC pens me from the front, probably using premium, and then the Churchill 7 I spot and kill after he puts another shot into me. I head up there trying to make my engine power go a little bit further, but it's not enough because the LEFH 18B2 puts a good, good accurate shot tracking me, and the game is over. So, in reality, I did get six kills, and it was well worth those six kills, and I was pretty surprised that the fifth battle I got this result. So, that's been it for the 25 subscriber special. I hope you enjoyed. Like and comment if you liked it. Dislike and comment if you disliked it. And also subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel. If you liked it or would like to see more of this, leave your comment in the comment section below. Again, the link to the mod that I will have in the video description probably in about two to three days will, will be in the video description by then, and I hope you have a good day.